All right, guys, so today I'm going to talk about setting up bundling and minification services with .NET. Uh, this is more of a generic .NET topic, but there is some customizations that relate to Sitecore more specifically. Uh, typically, when you start a basic uh, .NET MVC project, you would have you would have an application start, which would be run within the your global .asx page. Uh, which would just initialize the application start, which would initialize your routes, your um, bundles, your things like that. Uh, we have to go about a different, slightly different approach here because we're working with uh, Sitecore. Uh, so the way we would handle this is that there is a pipeline that is initialize process, and then there's processes that are, are part of that pipeline. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a, a processor that will initialize the MVC minif minification and, and bundling service with .NET. So uh, the first part of this is we just need to make sure we have that installed. So uh, first things first, we can just go to manage NuGet packages in our example.web solution that we've been using for other sessions. I've basically taken this just after I had worked on the forms implementation about how to build a form inside Sitecore, a custom form, not using web forms for markers. Uh, you'll see that some of the, that stuff is in place. To do this, all we need to do is go to browse and we need to find the optimization uh, functionality. So the ASP.NET web optimization. So we can just say install. Just say accept. This is going to do web optimization as well as web grease. Once that is done, um, now we can start working with creating this pipeline. So typically where I write customizations to pipelines is going to be in the infrastructure project. I haven't written any so far, but I'll create a new pipelines folder. And I will just create a MVC folder inside here. Basically, these are my pipeline customizations to MVC. So now I will create a application start. Make it public class. I am also going to go ahead and define a bundle config. This is where I would define all my bundles for the site. Uh, getting going, let's just start defining our bundle config and then we'll show how to wire up that to the application start and then show how the application start would get initialized in the patch config of uh, or the config of Sitecore using a patch config. So we're just going to use a public static void uh, bun or register bundles. This method will be called from our initialize or our um, application start. Um, that's also another good point. We need to also install or that NuGet package in my example infrastructure as well. or else it won't allow me to map these references I'll be pulling in. So there you go. And we can just call this, let's see, what do I call it? Bundles. So, now we can start to configure some of these, these settings. First, I want to configure ignore list. These are items that would be ignored from the bundles. Um, um, 
so I would have another method down here. two uh, methods register JS bundles where I will pass in a the bundles and I will be a register CSS bundles if we have any CSS bundles which you may we may not so just like that and then we would define these Now we can start defining what goes into our bundles. What I want to do for JS is I want to add all the JavaScript, um, all the jQuery and the jQuery validation, et cetera, into my bundle. So I'm going to start doing that. Now you can create more than one bundle. And typically this is what I would do is I would have something that's maybe third party bundles, um, some sort of custom bundle, which is bundles or a grouping of all the JS files that you have, um, typically global JS files that are specific to your site that you're writing for your site, such as if you have something in your navigation that's going to show up on, across the entire site, you might have some sort of logic that is in a script.js or a site.js or something like that. You would add that to a custom bundle. I am going to create the bundle that represents our plugins, which, so I'll just call it pretty much exactly that. So plugins, and now you're going to include stuff into that. If I can Uh, and this basically just takes a list of paths. So um, I could have scripts. Let's see what my paths are down here. So I can say jQuery validate dot min dot js. I could also go with A query 1.8.0 dot min dot js and let's just do those for now validate oh unobtrusive of course And just like that. So we've defined our first bundle. There's nothing really else to um, define in here. Uh, like I said, we could do a custom one, but I don't really have any custom JS currently. We'll get to that in later sessions uh, about configuring custom bundles, and then we'll just reference this as a prerequisite to that, that session. All right, so now I want to pull in those bundles into our application start. 
So I will just do a public void process and then I will have a pipeline pipeline args which are just arguments passed through the pipeline and I'll say args and then I will start defining uh, I have a bundle config that register bundles and then I will pass in the bundle table that's bundles just like that and basically now we have that defined and everything that you could have defined in here is the routes so if you have custom routes defined for your project you could define them in here as well so that's kind of where you could have split these up into different pipelines theoretically so you could have a bundle uh, a register bundles pipeline you could have a, a register routes pipeline um, and you just do the patch like I'm about to show you, you just have separate patches for these um, but I think it's more efficient to just have one defined called application start which just represents .NET MVC application start and then you would uh, run these items so now that that's defined what I want to do is I want to actually configure some of the site core pipelines so Typically what I'll do is I'll create a new pipelines item or config just to separate the different different types of patches that I have. So I'll just call this pipelines config. And then I will just define some things here. Uh, let's just do one of these other ones. Make it a little faster. Like that. And then I can start. Um, let's just show you what, what I'm doing here. So. what I plan on patching. Once this loads, I am going to find the initialize. Here it is, initialize. And basically I'm going to want to patch after, let's see where is that, or patch before. Let's see, I don't see it. Let me see. Um, Here it is. So here's the initialize, and I'm going to patch before the initialize global filters. Um, actually, well, that's probably a good spot. So I want to patch this item. So I am going to patch initialize and pipelines. So, so I will have pipelines here, and then initialize. And now I'm going to do a patch of that. So I'm going to say I want to patch before. And then you would just pass in a at type equals. And then you just pass in a type that we're passing to, which will be uh, example.web. Or actually, no example dot infrastructure dots. See what it was. Example dot infrastructure dot pipelines dot MVC uh, application start. This, it will be in the example that infrastructure project. Um, and let's just pull that type in real quick. So to do that, all we need to do is copy this. So we're just saying, hey, when you see this, this type equals this value, 
we're going to patch before it. So it's going to show up between initialize ASP.NET MVC and it's going to show up uh, just before uh, the initialize global filters. We could do a patch instead, which would patch the item instead of this this current item. If we wanted to override it, we could patch after. If we wanted to show up after this item, um, there's a lot of different patching options. So at some point, I'm going to show you guys how to do patching. Um, just kind of show some of the different scenarios that you'd run into and how you'd patch uh, using the Sitecore patching logic. But uh, for now, we're just going to go ahead and uh, just do that. So that's pretty much it. There's one other, there's, I guess, two other pieces to this. There is, we need to disable or allow these custom bundle paths to be considered uh, not part of the system, but part of uh, our custom logic. So it needs to just ignore that, those special paths. And then the second thing is we need to define and pull in that custom patch or that custom bundle that we created into our main layout. So we'll be getting into that here in a second. All right, so the first thing that we're gonna wanna do is uh, set up this setting to ignore URL prefix prefixes from going into Sitecore logic and, and kind of getting screwed up there. So uh, let's go ahead and create a new patch since we don't already have one for this type of patch that I'm gonna do. And we're just going to call it settings. And again, it's I need to just uh, use an existing one. So uh, we're just going to patch a setting. So first we'll define the grouping folder. And then now we're going to patch a setting. The setting name is ignore URL prefixes. And we're just going to patch an attribute. Uh, let's just show you what I'm going to patch real quick is I'm going to ignore URL prefixes, which is basically this item here. So this is a definition saying anything that's Sitecore slash default.aspx would be ignored, slash trace, slash web resource, etc. So we're just going to add something to the end of this. Since we're patching its value, we want to make sure we have all this existing data. So we're actually going to copy it and move it in. Um, otherwise, all those existing patches would be lost. So it's a pipe separated list. So all we're going to do is pipe it and then say slash bundles. Like that. So now we're done with this. The very last step is to just go into our main view or our main layout. And instead of having all this, we're going to actually have a scripts dot bundle or scripts dot render and then we're going to render that that script that uh, bundle that we defined so where was it let's just go and we're just going to pull this guy in it's basic like that It doesn't recognize that reference. So all we need to do to get this to resolve is include a new using statement. Um, it should be referencing it and pulling in. I'm not sure why not, but IntelliSense is not working. Um, so that's pretty much it. We don't need this anymore. We also don't need that uh, semicolon since it's not a thing like that. So that's pretty much it. Uh, let's go ahead and run this real quick. Uh, so we'll just trigger a publish. We could also move the system.web.optimization stuff into the 
views web config. Uh, so typically you might see it here. Let's just put it down here. If I save that and then I went back to the main view and I just could remove this. Sometimes after doing something like that, you have to close Visual Studio and then restart it. So um, now if I open up that, that main view that I had, my main layout, basics, you should see that scripts.render is now resolving correctly. So it's system.web.optimization.scripts. So that's pretty much it. Now I'm going to publish this again just one last time. And we should now see on our example, a two instance that it is now loading in the correct stuff. Uh, one problem I've had in the past is with NuGet or uh, with NewtonSoft. So NewtonSoft is a requirement for system.web.optimization. Um, and because of that, it uses a newer version of it instead of a 6.0 version that Sitecore is using. Um, so you would have to just upgrade the version of the DLL that you have that's pulling in. Um, I typically, what I would do is just use an older version of the system.web.optimization that just uses the correct version of Newtonsoft. Um, but in this instance, I will just show the kind of hacky way. I don't, I, like I said, I don't really like doing it this way. But if I go to Newtonsoft in the my projects website bin and find Newtonsoft, assuming it's using seven or eight, that's actually using an older version. That's weird. Yeah. Anyways, you just need to make sure that this this reference is is matched up correctly. We might have to downgrade our our version of NuGet. Have this problem all the time. Like I said, getting it to work perfectly is is a little tedious, but. Uh, see, it's using 5.0.4. I could try upgrading this to 6. I don't really want to upgrade to 10. Let's just try upgrading it to 6.0.1. Another option I have is I could just try getting rid of that reference. All right, and let's just try publishing one last time. Um, now we're getting a different error. Uh, looks like an issue with our pipeline or with our patches that we wrote. One must be malformed. So this one looks good. It must be the other one. Don't really see any issues with that. All right, uh, the issue is I just don't have processor defined here. Uh, so if I defined that this was a processor and I'm patching it, then this would have worked fine. So I'll publish it, and now I should be able to load the page. So if you get the issue where you, you've installed system.web.optimization and then it won't build because of it's complaining about JSON, just upgrade, update the JSON specifically to the right version. Um, it's also complaining about web grease. This is actually a very common one. Um, web grease uh, causes me a lot of problems as well. I think this is what I was actually referring to. So this is running 1.5.14. So it's running the wrong version. It's running a newer version. We want a version that's going to run 1.5.1. So it's trying to run a newer version of it, which is not going to work. So let's see what we can do to get this to work. Um, All 
or not properties, I want manage NuGet packages. So go find web grease. If I can downgrade it easily. What I really want is 1.5.1, not 1.5.2 or 1.6, 1.3. See if I can just update it 1.3 without it blowing up. It probably will. I think this is one of the ones where I've had to actually update the reference directly. Um, typically, I want to. I'd have to install a different version of web optimization, an older version. So I think that's kind of what I just did. So um, so if I go ahead and I publish everything now, actually, I'm probably going to have to do this to the other project as well. So I have it referenced twice. Now if I publish, I load up the site. There we go, you page source, and now you see that it's added a bundle. Basically, it's determined that you have debugging set to false. So now it's going, which I'll show here in a second how you configure this to see, so since obviously in your local environment, you don't want to necessarily see this because when you're trying to inspect the code, you're just going to see this, and you're not going to be able to actually diagnose what the issue is. Um, I added all min files to the bundle Typically, you would actually add all normal JavaScript files, and then the bundling and minification service would actually bundle that and then cache that version that is created, this combined file that's minified and, and bundled all the scripts into one uh, from that. So how do you turn this off? How do you get rid of the fact that it's bundled into one, and wouldn't you want to rather see each reference individually? So to do this, if we go back to Visual Studio, and we open up the web config. Actually, this would be the not the correct web config to open uh, because that doesn't should not get published to the the the, the folder. Um, instead, we go to the website and we open up this web config, and we find the line that says this compilation default language C sharp debug faults. Target framework 4.5.2. Um, so if we change this now to true and we save it and we refresh, it'll take a few minutes to respond. And now you see it's actually showing you each reference. So typically, what we do uh, in my local development is that you, you would want to configure multiple configurations. Now, if you just have debug and release, you, what you do is have debug, and what you would create is a patch config or a transformation for web for the web.config where you would define that the um, that that compilation uh, debug yields true only for the debug uh, configuration that you define using a transformation. In the release, you'd set that to false, obviously, because you don't want it to. Uh, not be bundled and minified. So you could create and use these transformations. Basically determine if you're in a local development environment, you can have everything set to true so you can debug everything while you're doing local development and then have a completely different configuration using transformations to for your release cycle or your, your deployments and things like that. 
Uh, at some point, I'm going to show you how to do transformations for patch configs using either Slow Cheetah. There's other ways as well. Habitat uses its own um, kind of transformation process for this. Um, but I, I, I have a preference for Slow Cheetah. But uh, it's how you could have like these settings. You could have it patched so that in your local debug mode or your local environment uh, configuration, you have it do one thing. And then when you go to release where you're deploying to production or to a UAT server or something like that, you'd have a completely different. Uh, that's pretty much it for this session. Uh, now, I, hopefully, you'll start doing this for your scripts. You can do this for styles as well, and you can start to kind of optimize your front end uh, using this method so that you don't have to include these scripts manually. One, you'd, well, you'd add them manually to the bundle, but you wouldn't have to manually add them to this thing. You just add the scripts.render, and you specify the, the bundle that you define, and then you should be good to go. So um, that's it.